Hey, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to unregister a service worker. And this is a very common question that I see asked a lot about service workers, especially by developers, because let's face it, we're not all perfect and we're going to inevitably introduce a bug. And sometimes those bugs can be you know, sort of catastrophic and get us in a situation where our service worker is kind of cached tightly in the browser, for lack of a better term, and uh, you can't just update it. Now, there are really two scenarios I'm going to kind of focus on trying to help you out here. First is what to do locally on localhost as a developer, and then second, what are your options if you happen to deploy, deploy a service worker with a bug that you need to update, but the bug itself or the way you've got things going on with your service worker, it's just not updating with the latest changes. Um, so that's what I wanted to go over. Now, if you're developing locally, which is where you should encounter these bugs before you deploy them, let's be honest, um, you've got a lot of recourse. Uh, and this will work even if you're uh, on a website and it's got a service worker that's public, you still have access to these, I'm just saying as a developer, because let's face it, the average consumer out there does not know what F12 is or how to use the F12 tools, but you are a developer and you should know how to use these. So um, I've got our Fast Furniture demo site here and I go on the application tab and I've chosen the service workers option over here on the left. Now up here at the top, we've got uh, the first option I'm going to show you and that is force the update uh, on reload. And as you can see there, basically the service worker is going to automatically go through the update cycle every single time, kind of assuming that there is a new version of, a ser of the service worker on the server. So if you check this and then you reload, you'll see that it went through the installing uh, event over here and everything uh, worked out the way we wanted it to. I believe I have a, uh, a skip waiting call in there right now. That's why it uh, automatically made it active. But if I just refresh this again, it'll it'll trigger it up to 29, I believe. We'll see that happen. Yeah, there we go. Oh, so it's 28. I guess it kind of detects that there's not a change, but it does go ahead and try to do the update there. Uh, so that's one way that uh, you can definitely get out of that. And the problem with doing this is as a developer, you may be masking a potential problem with your uh, life cycle by having that checked. So my advice is before you commit your code, uh, even to your uh, repository like GitHub or whatever, um, uncheck this and do a couple of test runs through your site just to make sure that your service worker life cycle is not, say, compromised. Okay. Now, our next option, if that's failing or maybe you don't really like to work with it like that, maybe you are trying to debug your life cycle, uh, you have another option here, and that is to hit the unregister button, and you can see now the state of it is deleted. And if I go through and redo this, we're going to go through the full application life cycle or the service worker life cycle. And I believe I may have got myself into the state I don't like where it's kind of waiting for me to close this out, but you get the idea. There it goes. All right, good. All right, now, so that's what we can do as a developer. And as you can see, I'm on localhost. Obviously, I could do this with uh, any service worker I wanted uh, on any site. Um, but again, you're not the consumer, and the consumer's not going to know how to do this. Plus, if they're on a phone, the chances of them being able to do this are next to zero because it's not easy uh, to do this on the phone. Um, so... What are your options? Well, the first option is to uh, architect your site um, choices a little better. First off, um, never place your service worker in your cache. Uh, that would be my number one advice right there is uh, don't put it in any of your cache. It doesn't need to be there. In fact, I don't think it will honor it in the cache. I gotta go double check on that but uh, don't put it in there. Next is um, be careful of how long you um, keep uh, assets in cash. Now, <clears throat> obviously the goal is to try to 
um, cache as many of the web pages and the CSS and JavaScript images, whatever, as feasible for your application. But you want to be careful of keeping them in there for a super long time. And as you can see right here, all these are cached today because I've been clearing the cache here a little bit, trying to get a few things done. But you may want to um, force an update to these assets uh, at different peri periods of time. And of course, it's going to be up to you how you update those assets. Uh, I, I call it the personality of your application. You need to be mindful of that and create a caching strategy that works for you. Now, there's a lot to be said about choosing the caching strategy for the different types of assets in your application. And there are uh, about 15 to 20 well-known caching strategies. And if you really want to take a deep dive in those, we'll be launching a big giant progressive web app course uh, over sometime in the next week. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. And we will go deep dive into that. Now, what's your last choice here? Well, if you maybe have something that's not updating because the cache headers are updated on the script file that's registering your service worker or, or whatnot, um, and you need to get that updated and you're, you're worried that you're you're just out of luck. Uh, you're not out of luck. The, the service worker uh, specification has a little safeguard in there, and I call it the uh, happy mom uh, factor. And that is, if the service worker has not checked for an update on the server within the last 24 hours, it will automatically bypass all, all of the potential caching to go check the server for a new version of the service worker automatically. Now, this is a concept that's a little hard for most to grasp at first, so, so kind of listen to me carefully here. Now, there's different levels of cache. Obviously, we've got the service worker cache, but we still have browser cache, and browser cache generally honors the cache control header. And this is where you say, essentially, how long the browser should cache this file before having to go back to the server for a new version. And obviously the best practice on that is to set a, what we call a long life on that. You, typically a year <laughs> is what you really want, but that can vary by file, obviously. And you could get yourself into a little pickle if you, say, put your service worker in there for a long time. Now, browsers do purge that cache periodically based on the amount of resources available. And since most people use their phones for the internet today, um, the browsers get fairly aggressive in purging the browser cache. Now, you can't rely on that, so what the service worker specification put in there was an automatic update from the server after 24 hours. So let's say the person visits your site, gets the buggy service worker situation going on, and you can't update that service worker uh, uh, through the other means that we talked about without maybe walking them through how to do it through the developer tools, which you do not want to get into. Um, um, the worst case scenario you're going to run into is you're going to be able to find a fix, deploy it, and it's going to be 24 hours from when the person loaded that buggy situation until it's going to just clear itself up naturally. So you can think about this as kind of a healing uh, uh, factor built into the specification. Now. Now, this does not mean that it's going to phone home every 24 hours. It doesn't do that. The only time it'll do that is when the service worker instance is invoked, meaning that a web page was loaded, a push notification was set down, and if you've got push notifications set down, uh, set up and the person has agreed to that, this might be a way for you to get yourself out of that pickle uh, manually, right? Um, is to send a push notification down the, the line after, say, 24 hours or whatnot. What's going to happen is the 24-hour window is it kicks in the next time the service worker is loaded after that 24-hour window has expired. Now, if they only visit your site once a week or once a month or once a year, it's not going to be until they, say, visit your site to um, cause that service worker to spin up an instance before it's going to go through that update cycle. It's not just going to naturally update itself on its own. Um, so you could, in theory, send a push notification. Of course, they have to be subscribed. Um, or maybe maybe send out an email, throw on your email list, and you know provoke them to go you know load the site to read something or uh, 
Red Arc. Maybe be a good, good excuse for touch for a touch point with your customers. Um, who knows? It depends on again nature, character, personality of your site. So basically, the worst case scenario you're going to run into is um, at least no more than 24 hours before an update's going to post, and you can get yourself out of the bind and uh, and move on with life. And you're going to have that. Of course, you're going to have that horrible 24 hours. Uh, of course. It doesn't necessarily mean that your site's broken just because your service worker might be in a broken state and you can't update it. Uh, remember, make sure you code your service worker so it's, uh, say, not coupled that tightly to your front end, let's say, and break stuff. So hopefully that, that will keep you from getting in a bind and give you some options to get out. Hopefully you uh, troubleshoot and find these potential issues while you're in development and you can control them through the developer tools. And hopefully you'll be able to um, Fix this if it does happen to you in production, um, and know that the the biggest time frame you're going to have to sweat it out is about 24 hours. Now, um, before I go, one more thing I wanted to show you. Firefox also has the ability to unregister a service worker. Now, to get to their service worker stuff, you have to do something a little differently. You have to go to uh, where was it? Developer. Which pops out this menu and then you can go to the service worker option which brings this up or you can type in about colon debugging pound sign workers which obviously the pound sign is for the different parts here and I've got uh, I guess I got my service workers unregistered in here oh there they are okay so I had to load it up all right um, it's a good thing I checked that out you can click the unregister just like you can in the Chrome developer tools now, right now, Firefox does not have the ability to bypass um, or just, uh, automatically do that up update during the development cycle. Uh, obviously, their tools aren't necessarily as robust at this point, and I will be covering those, obviously, in the course as well. We'll go into a deep dive in this. The Opera uh, developer tools are basically a carbon copy of the Chrome developer tools. They're probably a little bit off because Chrome does update a little more frequently, I think. But uh, the, as far as this goes, um, they have the features there uh, in Opera as well. And I need to go back and double check uh, how Edge is doing it. But right now that's in such a fluid state with the developer tools and service workers in particular. Or I don't want to um, give you any guidance, especially since those are hidden behind an about flag. When those are... Uh, general consumption ready uh, I will come back and show you how to do that in Microsoft Edge as well so hopefully this is going to help you out of any pickles it's also going to help you heck build a strategy uh, to handle these scenarios that way you've got some sort of uh, disaster recovery um, documentation in place or straight uh, uh, plan of action and this is another one of those things that can go a long way in getting sign off from the old bosses on deploying a service worker is knowing that you can fix problems uh, in a reasonable manner if you got any questions about unregistering uh, a service worker please feel free to leave a comment uh, below and if you think this will help other people out please like the video share it with your friends um, and again, just give me any feedback you want, um, and definitely be on the lookout for our up, upcoming progressive web app course. We've got a lot of uh, great excitement that uh, we've got planned around that as well. So um, until later, I'll talk to you later. This is Chris Love, the owner of Love to Dev.